Hello. So in this talk, we'll be talking about uh, using Wasm for edge workloads. We'll also talk about Agri for discovering edge devices, and uh, we'll show how you can do this all in the context of Kubernetes. Uh, so yeah, yeah, let's get right into it. And uh, hello, uh, I'm Rishat. I'm a student at the University of Toronto, and I re and uh, I also research uh, computer vision and machine learning at U, uh, U of T, and I also do AI research at CIO. Hi everyone, I'm Shivai. And I am a developer relations engineer at MilliSearch, which is a Rust-based search engine. And I'm also Wasmedge ambassador, so Wasmedge is a WebAssembly runtime. And I've been working primarily in the WebAssembly space for the past two years. So, of course, uh, starting off with what exactly is WebAssembly. Now, some of you who have been attending all these sessions at the Embedded IoT Summit might have probably uh, watched one of the previous sessions at 9.50 that is around uh, edge devices and WebAssembly. So I'll not waste a lot of time talking about WebAssembly, but just a primer for those folks who might be new uh, to this space. So WebAssembly is a binary instruction format. And it's primarily meant for being uh, used for being able to compile, let's say, uh, source code from multiple languages into this one single uh, binary format that can then be run across multiple platforms. And it's been designed, as I mentioned, as a compilation target for it supports different types of languages. So whether you're looking at highly functional or object-oriented programming languages, and even today, scripting languages. So today we have support for more than 20 plus uh, languages that can be compiled into the WASM binary with their appropriate tool chains. And some of the biggest benefits that you get with WebAssembly, that's what we'll be covering in the next few slides. So of course, this is WebAssembly. And now we'll look at some of the features that we get. So the first one is it's pretty efficient because it performs or it gives you near native performance. So of course, uh, in comparison to native bytecode, uh, it's not at that similar level if you were using something like a Rust native binary or a C++ native binary, but it does come pretty quick. And we'll see some of the benefits that we get from it being very fast and efficient inside of our edge workloads. The other one is that it is open source and it is also debuggable. So in today's morning session, there is a reference into how you can debug WebAssembly modules with the help of some VS Code extensions. So definitely check that out as well in that particular talk where they have covered how to debug WebAssembly modules. And of course, it does work for non-web platforms. It started out as a browser technology, but today it finds even more usage for cloud, for cloud native, and for edge workloads, as we'll uh, be showcasing in today's demonstration. And it is an open platform being developed by multiple companies. Most of the world's uh, companies today, including Cisco, Adobe, Microsoft, all of them are contributing to the Bytecode Alliance, which is basically the entire alliance that uh, defines the, all the different WebAssembly standards, spe especially for the edge and for the cloud native use cases. And it is also very safe. So it comes in a sandboxed technology, so it adds safety as well. So we also see so how, how those benefits for safety can be useful, uh, can be used for the edge applications when we are working with multiple edge devices at a scale. So uh, just in summary, what we have discussed so far is that uh, WebAssembly, it's a binary instruction format, primarily designed as a compilation target, which can be used to compile down uh, your source code functions from multiple languages, and it per performs near native uh, uh, performance as well. And also, it's very portable. So that means that it supports most of the different type of architectures, so whether you're talking about H, uh, x64 or x86, or even RISC-V-based architecture. So you don't have to worry about your edge devices having different type of system architectures uh, unless and until you have the WebAssembly interpreter that can be run in those ar system architectures, then your WebAssembly module that gets generated after you have compiled your code, uh, you can run it across all these different type of system architectures. So that means it has native support for being able to run on most of the different type of edge devices that we have. And now, of course, coming into the fact of how do you actually make the WebAssembly modules interact with the system resources. So we'll go back in time and see how your native applications that you write uh, typically operate. So you have the kernel that is responsible uh, as that authority layer between the application 
and your system resources. So with the help of syscalls, you're able to get access to the different types of file resources, uh, and that's what the kernel does. And similarly, when we talk about WebAssembly, uh, we have something called as the WebAssembly Web system interface that does provide you those specific uh, API calls and syscalls that you can make for uh, your WebAssembly module to access your system resources. So whether it's the file or the network or the input-output operations, those are manageable with the help of WebAssembly system interface. So uh, it's what WASI is essentially powering up uh, your capability to uh, access your network resources. So as we'll see in today's demonstration, that how these IoT Edge applications can leverage the WebAssembly modules, the whatever is happening behind the scenes is with the help of WASI. So this particular diagram that you see is what uh, give, should give a better understanding. So we have the host OS, in between we have the WebAssembly system interface, and the top we have all of the WebAssembly modules. So the system interface makes us calls to be able to get access to all those different type of resources that I mentioned. And of course, now coming uh, to the most important aspect of why all of us are over here, and that's edge is complicated, right? So uh, whether it is with respect to looking at different type of const uh, constraints when it comes to uh, edge, right? So of course, the biggest constraints are with respect to space and with respect to performance of these edge devices. So if you were to run your standard Linux containers or systems, uh, those can be pretty heavy, and even to actually uh, get get them started, the cold start time for Linux containers is pretty huge. Then if you look at security as well, uh, we need to ensure that uh, we take into consideration security for all of the different edge devices that you're running inside of your cluster. And network connectivity is also something that we typically face a lot of issues when we are uh, setting up the TCP IP connections and the MTLS connections to manage your communication between all of these different, uh, different edge uh, nodes that we are running. And then of course, the biggest one is the heterogeneous ecosystem of different type of edge devices. So let's say that you're having uh, different uh, node devices that have different functions. So some of them might be doing something like video surveillance. For that, you'll need some kind of type of architecture for video cameras. Uh, you might have some other sensors that will have completely different architecture. So those are some of the complications that come when you are working in a multi-node setup and you have different node devices uh, having different functions with completely different architecture. And managing all of those can be very difficult. And that's where some of the superpowers that we get with WebAssembly come into the foray. So because of the fact that WebAssembly has support for multiple platforms, it's very easy to just use it across different types of system architectures. But at the same time, in comparison to containers, you get some inherent benefits in comparison to these containers. So the first one is that WebAssembly is a lot more smaller in terms of the size as well. So the WebAssembly modules uh, do not essentially package a lot of the things that you're typically your containers package, so the size of your WebAssembly web modules is a lot smaller. It essentially is just the application code that you're running. And uh, because of that, the startup time for your WebAssembly modules is also significantly faster in comparison to the Linux containers. So just think of uh, the use case where you have smaller sizes of the WebAssembly modules and the startup time is faster. So that means that the load times uh, when you're running these, especially in constrained uh, constraint environments within these edge applications or edge devices, it's a lot faster for be, being able to spin them up, uh, spin them up and then run them. And then, uh, of course, it's more portable, has support for multiple system architectures, and as we also mentioned, it's uh, smaller as well. And generally speaking, it will be also more secure. So uh, because of the sandbox model of how WebAssembly runs, the WebAssembly models itself cannot really do anything. So there's a more rule-based approach where you have to um, directly set up what all resources your WebAssembly models can use. You have that capability to set up what all it can access, uh, so you have to set it up manually. So that, that is why it is generally more secure in comparison to your containers. So that is where uh, now uh, Rishit will talk more about uh, the project Akri and how it's useful for detecting different type of edge devices. Yeah, so, oh, so we talked a lot about WebAssembly being portable, WebAssembly being small and fast, and uh, this is mainly because the WebAssembly module uh, so, so with the WebAssembly module, you're, it, it's not an executable. 
uh, you also then need uh, a WebAssembly runtime, something like Wasm time, Wasm Edge, many of these. So you also need that, and uh, which is why it allows you to be portable, and the WebAssembly module itself is smaller, but you also have this WebAssembly runtime, uh, which does some stuff for you. So it, it's so it does feel a bit like LLVM IR at this moment, and uh, for anyone new, it's it's not that. Uh, but we'll talk a bit more about that. Uh, and, and right now, I also wanted to talk about how Akdi comes into play and uh, how Wasm can give you superpowers, especially when using Akdi. So, so a lot of the edge devices, uh, so, so you often face a lot of problems when uh, you have edge devices, uh, and those might be connected to some Kubernetes cluster. And uh, so what Akdi allows you to do is, uh, you have all these edge devices, and those are treated as resources in a standard Kubernetes cluster. So it allows you to detect detect these edge devices and uh, schedule workloads to them pretty easily. And uh, if we just see uh, a very quick overview of what Acre does, uh, so so we have the standard Kubernetes control plane and nodes, and Acre has this. Uh, so Acre particularly has these components, the Acre agent and Acre controller, and those allow you to, uh, and, and you also have the Acre custom broker deployed. So so, uh, so when the custom broker is deployed, uh, it has this discovery handler, which understands that a new edge device has been discovered, and uh, you, you also, uh, and now this custom broker allows you to Treat it just as a standard resource. So, oh, so when you have the Acre agent, uh, m m so what you can do is just schedule pods onto this edge device, and still get to uh, get to use all the benefits of Kubernetes and management and all that. Uh, so, so, th so that's what Acre allows you to do pretty easily. Uh, this is also pretty similar to. Uh, w what you would do, let's say, if 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 you have a separate node pool and you want to schedule different kinds of pods on it, uh, what you would do is fundamentally pretty same, uh, a, a pr pretty similar. Uh, so so it allows you to detect these edge devices and also schedule jobs to them very easily. And of course. The inherent question then comes is um, why use Wasm with Acre, right? So primarily, if we uh, talk about how, what benefits we receive from Wasm, those can directly be applied to Acre as well. Because as Rishit mentioned that Acre is primarily used for being able to detect these different type of IoT devices, edge devices, and then just add them as custom resources that you'll have, similar to how we have volumes in Kubernetes. Those can be added as resources to your Kubernetes uh, node pools. So primarily, we are leveraging all the different benefits that we get with the help of WebAssembly and just applying them to Acre. So whether we talk about the security enhancements that you get with WebAssembly, uh, that's one of the reasons why would you want to use in order to have a better security for your uh, devices that you are discovering inside of your entire Kubernetes node pool. And then, of course, second one is the performance benefits uh, that you get with the help of WebAssembly over containers. And primarily, the third one is uh, as we discover, as we spoke about uh, the discovery feature of Acre, we are detecting different types of edge devices. So we are using the portability of Wasm to be able to then support all of those different type of edge devices that are being discovered by Acre. So we'll see in today's demonstration how we can leverage both of them together in order to create highly scalable edge applications. So. So let's talk a bit about what can we do with uh, Wasm and Acre and how, how does this all pan out. So so we understand what Acre does right now, uh, which is pretty simple to understand, uh, how it detects and then schedules pods on them. And uh, r right now we have something looking like this. Uh, we, we have the control plane uh, on some node and uh, we have the user node uh, where we want most of the stuff to happen. And then we have our edge node, which is 
for now let's just say it's a um, camera and uh, and we and we want to use this the edge cluster is a k3s cluster uh, uh, kubernetes a standard uh, kubernetes cluster could be anything and uh, you still want to use all the benefits uh, and management of kubernetes so you already have this and when you deploy acri uh, you uh, you have the acri controller deployed as well uh, which talks to the api server and uh, th so this will also help schedule pods uh, with the api server but but once you but once you tell acri uh, what uh, uh, what protocol it wants to discover devices on we have the acri agent and the uh, and the acri discover discovery handler and that discovers this camera once that's done you have the wasm broker come into play and the wasm broker allows you to now use this camera as a resource within the user node so uh, and once so uh, so wasm broker will facilitate doing this and the wasm workload can then be run on the edge device directly so uh, so so you still get to so so you still get to use the edge device uh, on the, which is on the same network and manage it through the user node uh, so the wasm workload and there is also the shim so so the shim would pretty much be container d shim or we can also uh, or or if it's just an edge device on the network you can also just use some wasm runtime uh, so so the so what uh, any of these shims allow you to do is uh, have these wasm workloads or web assemblies run inside containers so so there's also uh, so what you want to do is r r run these and have the feel of running a container but of course these will be uh, I'll, these will consume a lot more a lot less space and be a lot faster than containers we'll talk about why they are a lot faster but uh, so so that so that's essentially what you want to do with the shim have the web assemblies uh, uh, be converted to ocis oh, yeah and with that i want to talk a bit more about making wasm work for the edge and we so so we talked about how how we can probably redo some of the acri stuff uh, to make it work f to make it work to get wasm and get all the benefits of wasm for the edge uh, but i want to talk a bit more about wasm for the edge so let's try to understand what is happening here uh, we have all of these languages which are converted to dot wasm and uh, so this is a process this first gets converted to llvm ir which is then converted to dot wasm and uh, the dot wasm is just this instruction format and you can run this on any machine uh, you can run the same dot wasm on any machine and that is because when you run it on any of these machines you also need to have uh, you ha you of course have the web assembly module itself but you also need to have some runtime and uh, uh, so so the runtime is just deciding uh, how how to run the web assembly or uh, how to run the web assembly module and if, if you also compare the if you if you also compare the size of the web assembly module and the runtime itself uh, b both of them combined are also lower than standard containers and uh, so this is why it becomes really portable you can now run the same dot wasm on everything uh, so, so, so something very popular uh, with a lot of edge deployments is just jit or uh, ahead of time compiling it uh, and and this is uh, and and you can do the same with uh, web assembly modules as well but you ha you happen to sacrifice portability to do so uh, because, because like these aot compiled modules uh, will be run from hosts that are compatible with the target environment of the aot compiled module and uh, uh so so you sacrifice the portability aspect but when working with non trivial programs you will see that aot compiling will achieve higher performance 
then an interpreter or even a JIT enabled run. Uh, and but, but what you would also do is uh, once you AOT compile this down, uh, the size of your WebAssembly module itself will be increased because many elements of the WASM runtime, uh, at least the elements of the WASM runtime which are needed to run that WebAssembly module will also be compiled into the binary. And that improves performance by quite a lot of margin, but you happen to sacrifice portability. Uh, and your WebAssembly module itself becomes larger uh, uh, when you try to AOT compile it. So, so, so now if you think about AOT compiling and uh, you still have some of the drawbacks of WASM of it not being native performance and near native performance. So which is why I want to talk a bit about making WASM work for the edge and how you get over these limitations. So before that, let's take an experimental look at this. So, so we'll take an experimental look where I want to run a compute intensive workload with WASM and do it better. And that should help us better understand uh, how you make it work for the edge. So, so what we'll do is we have uh, neural radiance fields or nerfs, which are pretty popular. And what we want to do is generate novel views. So we have one of this image of a car, which we took from some edge device. And uh, what we want to do is tell it that how would the car look like if the camera was placed here instead? And the machine learning model then decides uh, what to do and produces this target image. So this is what we want to do. This is immensely costly. Uh, and uh, you can also take a look at the original Nerf paper. Uh, so this is immensely costly. And this also happens in multiple stages. Uh, uh, where you would actually train the model and then in runtime you would just uh, 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 and, the, and in the runtime you would just tune some parts of the model and then produce these novel views so so this so this often gets pretty compute intensive and uh, it's nowhere near real time at all uh, so uh, uh, th so there is already mobile nerfs which makes it possible for nerves to run on edge. And it's still, qu it's still quite compute intensive. And uh, on a lot of edge devices, uh, at least the standard ones, where, where we consider 4 GB RAM and uh, um, just a simple CPU, uh, you, you wouldn't still be able to get more than 10 to 15 FPS, which uh, can be considered partly real time. So, so we have uh, so mobile nerves already does this, uh, which is pretty awesome, and uh, they do this with vanilla JavaScript as well. So, so so they run nerves with some algorithmic uh, modifications that allows you to run it partly on the edge. So the question now we want to ask is, can we use Wasm to make this faster? And uh, 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 along that we'll also talk about. It. How you make WASM really work for the edge? So, so first off, are doing the same AOT compilation. So doing the same AOT compilation at least for uh, NERS gets us to minus uh, to fourteen percent larger artifacts, and but we get to thirty two percent faster. And uh, this is also including uh, the rendering the neural field. So it's rendering the three D model. Uh, of the w combined with all the novel views we have, so so if you take a look at this car, we also need to render the 3D model of it. Uh, so with all the novel views from all angles, so so AOT compiling actually improves the rendering the neural field part by 32 percent, and I, and I mainly include percentages here because uh, uh, yeah, just to get a relative understanding of. Uh, how how optimizations to Wasm help this, and the, and this is uh, pretty interesting because for for other kinds of uh, machine learning models, especially if you take like a standard mobile net, you get to 20% smaller artifacts, and a Wasm mobile net uh, uh, module comes down to just 3.3 MBs, uh, which is really really cool, 
and uh, it all it's also 40% faster so so you beat uh, so so you beat standard uh, node.js wasm runtime and uh, you also beat tensorflow lite uh, standard tensorflow lite running uh, and wasm with aot compilation gets it down to, uh, really fast so if you see the benchmark i did uh, over here uh, it happens to uh, it happens to classify a single image uh, on the mobile net model in 500 milliseconds which is which is quite faster than tensorflow what tensorflow lite does so so that's pretty interesting and just aot compiling also gets this module down to just 3.3 mbs which you can directly run uh, so so that's so that's pretty nice what we can do with aot but at least for nerves this didn't uh, this seemed to help quite a lot with uh, inference time another thing you could do with webassembly modules is uh, initialize or uh, doing some initialization or warm up so so this allows you to understand uh, what instructions in the web, what instructions in the webassembly format or uh, or 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 what parts of the interpreter are actually needed and uh, this is this is actually easily doable yourself uh, but project but there are but there also exists exists projects like wizdur which can uh, help you quite a lot in uh, initializing or warming up webassembly binaries and in our case that's also pretty useful because the pre-trained weights that we have from the earlier stages of the nerf are uh, so, so we have quite a few pre-trained weights from the earlier stages of the nerf and uh, uh, especially uh, in case of machine learning models you will often see that just warming them up, warming up the webassembly binaries gets you to at least 50 percent increase uh, uh, in in inference times so if you just take a standard mobile net model where uh, where you don't have to do any neural rendering and all that you just have weights and a DAG and you compute it you get to directly 132 percent faster just by initializing the WebAssembly binary uh, which is pretty interesting to see and this also gets down the size by quite a lot because uh, because you now observe that most of the nodes or a lot of the instructions at least for standard machine learning models and how they are converted to wasm uh, how tensorflow models are being converted to wasm or how even pytorch models are being converted to wasm a lot of these nodes and instructions still remain so so you get to a lot faster uh, just by initializing the WebAssembly binary and there's also link time optimizations uh, which you might be aware with if you worked with LLVM and LLVM does LTO really really well and uh, and wasm doesn't happen to do it so well and this is mainly because the WebAssembly module you have is still instructions and uh, it, it's not that you are uh, it's, it's not that at compile time the compiler is actively trying to prove what parts of the program are unreachable or what inlining will help the program best so so the compiler is not trying to actively prove uh, inlining and what parts of the code and and what can be improved in code locality uh, which is why link time optimizations when uh, when link, when you try to do link time optimizations on wasm uh, you, you actually see quite some improvement and uh, uh, so this improvement mainly comes from uh, code locality and inlining uh, functions and for the nerves this gets us even smaller and even faster uh, the link time optimizations do have on the marginal improvement uh, but, but it gets us even faster and there is also quite a few other things uh, of quite a few other optimizations you can do uh, especially using the binarian IR uh, uh, which allows you uh, which is an IR that is specially made for WebAssembly so so and, and the binarian IR uh, does a lot more the compiler actually tries to prove unreachable parts of the code prove unreachable parts of 
the Wasm runtime and eliminate those as well. So, so the binary in IR is pretty helpful. And the ideal workflow with WebAssembly modules is you convert a WebAssembly module to binary in IR and then you convert it back to a WebAssembly module, uh, which is a lot faster and slower. Uh, there is most certainly intrusive stuff, which is pretty much uh, yeah, self-explanatory. Uh, there are uh, there are things like do not throw exceptions and uh, stuff in Rust, which makes WebAssembly modules a lot faster. But we'll not talk about this. Uh, this is very different from code base to code base. And there is also LLVM's optimization process. Uh, so so what's happening is. Um, so, so let's try to do, if, if you try to do a size profiling of the WebAssembly module itself, uh, LLVM IR is what generated before it being a WebAssembly module. So if you try to do size profiling of the WebAssembly module, you will notice that usually what holds true is, so, so the WebAssembly module is smaller than LLVM IR, uh, but usually what holds true is the, the parts which have the most Usage in the LLVM IR will also have will also take up the more take up more space and uh, increase execution uh, in in the WebAssembly module. So uh, and of course uh, there is a lot of information loss when uh, going from LLVM IR to a WebAssembly module. So what I suggest doing is always uh, in, instead of trying to profile the WebAssembly module which is quite hard to do and there's not a lot of information to debug from it. I always suggest size profiling the LLVM IR generated and uh, this allows you to and, and this allows you to get a better understanding of what parts uh, what parts of the WebAssembly module you can better optimize and uh, uh, and if you also uh, and, and if you also m make these optimizations to Optimize the LLVM IR, it of course means that the corresponding WebAssembly module will uh, also be smaller, uh, or smaller and faster. So, so, so that's uh, another thing I uh, always suggest. Doing. There are also a few other optimizations, but these are the ones which made the most sense for Nerf. And with these optimizations, what we were able to do is get Nerf running uh, at native speed so so we'll also see this and w with this what we get is uh, we, we get nerf running at 40 fps uh, in real time on an edge device uh, and that's uh, and, and that's and that corresponds to native execution uh, so, so 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 had it been written in C and optimized uh, th this would pretty much be the performance you could expect, uh, and, and that's pretty much well doable with WebAssembly, uh, which is really interesting to see. So this is what we want to do. Uh, uh, so this is what we want to be able to do: uh, have have the edge cluster, have the Acre agents, and um, the Wasm workload now is running this Nerf model. So the, that is our Wasm workload right now, and uh, so there's also this edge camera, uh, which first needs to be discovered, and then pods need to be scheduled to it. So, so what we do instead, uh, j just for demonstrating this, uh, Nerf is also quite finicky to run. So what we do to demonstrate this is have a simulated camera, uh, which just gives you four to eight images. So. So I'll also show how this works, and uh, but right now the setup I have is you have the simulated camera, which gives you four images of an object, so four different images of an object, and the Nerf model identifies these are the camera poses from which the image was taken, and then generates novel views from those images. So so novel views would be what if the camera pose was not one of these four. Uh, positions we put in, uh, wh what would what would the camera image look like? So so that's what the Wasm workload will do for us. Uh, it's just running Nerf under the hand, and uh, so this is what we want to be able to do, and 
and i'll quickly run through the demo uh, and uh, we'll take we'll do this a bit faster which is why i've also recorded this but what we but what i'm doing trying to do right now is just create a wasm wasi node so so this one's equipped with run wasi and uh, allows you to uh, allows you to run web assembly uh, web assembly workloads uh, so so i'm so i'm just creating three containers to do exactly that and uh, those three containers are now created and then i just see that i have three more con uh, three more nodes so oh sorry i meant nodes uh, so i so you could just see that you had three more nodes which are all equipped for running wasm workloads and once you do this uh, l l let's come to so now that we have it all set up uh, what we'll do right now is just try to install acri and that should uh, Ha have the discovery handler up and running and also have the acri agent acri controller so uh, so we'll be equipped to take on and uh, discover any edge devices in, in our case the edge devices just a standard simulator uh, uh but but once we do this uh, i'll also get to showing the pods so once we do this we should be able to see uh, agent and controller pods so that's because i've already deployed the helm chart and once you try to see the pods we uh we actually we j let's just show the uh, controller pods first and uh, so so we see that the controller has been deployed so if you re recall the diagram this was the acri controller and that has been deployed and we'll also have the acri agent be deployed so so with this uh we can now define how we want the discovery handler to identify new edge devices so uh so we can take a look to that and of course there is wasm2 oci uh which i just thought to take. so this is more related to the wasm workloads uh so we'll not talk more about this at least in this talk but wasm2 oci uh is a really cool tool that allows you to Uh, yeah convert wasm modules to oci and uh, w what we have is the discovery handler here uh, and so this is adapted from just uh, the acri standard uh, which is you tell it the protocol on which you want to discover new devices and i also and i also i and i also had a deployment uh, and i also had a kubernetes deployment which says that whenever you have an edge device discovered and it has the capability to take on more pods you just deploy the wasm workload to it so so we just saw the discovery handler right now and uh, wasm pods will be deployed once the discovery handler understands that so what this looks like uh, is actually running the nerf itself so this is now running the nerf and we actually get to 40 fps with this uh well this is running mobile nerf and uh, if deployed just using vanilla javascript uh, at least on this machine we only get to 15 fps and wasm actually allows us to get to 40 fps uh and and get us to more than pr pretty uh, pretty much faster than what vanilla javascript would have been able to do uh and this is also another example so this so this example is actually taken from eight images i give it eight poses and uh, then the nerf reconstructs it so uh, it reconstructs the image from those eight poses uh the chair the chair one actually was just on four different uh, camera poses and this one is on eight uh, which is why uh, which is why it also took a lot more time to render some parts of it and yeah so as we saw that we primarily showcased through this demonstration of how you can leverage the wasm workloads with the help of acri but there are some best practices that you can leverage so uh, azure comes with this edge essentials that allows you to very easily uh, bring community support for being able to manage multiple iot enabled devices on let's say uh, like you know with the help of acri specifically on like let's say a windows uh, workload and windows machine 
So you can very easily set up all of your edge uh, devices and those can be automatically discovered. So that actually comes with some predefined configurations for deployment and for the resource allocation that is required for discovering and then setting up these uh, different uh, devices on your uh, Kubernetes work, uh, workstation, right? So all of those can be very easily done with the help of Azure Edge Essentials. So uh, another very important thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with WebAssembly and with uh, Acre is the device strategy, right? Because and the most important aspect is that when you're dealing with different types of devices, um, how you discover them and how they will be defined as different uh, node pools within your Kubernetes cluster uh, needs to be very uh, clearly defined in order to run well with your WASM workloads. So those are some of the best practices when it comes to uh, when you're working with Acre. And of course, if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to take those up during the Q&A. But yeah, with that, we'll conclude our talk. Thank you so much, and we'll be open to questions now. Uh, also, you can, uh, so so we kind of rushed through the demo of actually running the NERF and using Acre to discover it uh, or to be able to strike a balance between covering content and still showing the demo. But you can most certainly try it out for yourself. Uh, I'll also I'll also make all the optimization passes which I was talking about briefly open source. So yeah, yeah you can most certainly try those things out for yourself using Acre. Yes. So, so when I, so at the end when I was showing uh, native execution, so so a lot of the uh, so a lot of the nerf is not it's not possible or at least not feasible to implement in C directly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So when I was trying to, uh, when I was saying I compare it, so it was being compared with vanilla JavaScript. So all the computations being done in vanilla JavaScript. Y yes, yes. So at least for this demo, all of it was CPU. Uh, yeah, so so the question was, uh, it should be more useful for AGI, but not so much for other real-time stuff. And, uh, well, yes, WASM will always be slower than directly going to the bytecode, and that's for sure. Uh, but, uh, b but there's also this balance between portability and uh, security and all the other f benefits of WASM. So, yes, it's most certainly slower, and... Uh, then you'll have to strike the trade-off. Hey, thank you. We're over time now. Thank you. That's all. Thank you.